Welcome, saints, for and to our Sunday morning service. We are having our service in a different way. Uh, for the first time, we are having live streaming of our services, but not in a confessional way that we have always had our services. Uh, but this one, we have to come to our houses through the social media. Uh, based on what is happening all over the world, uh, that uh, conventional gathering and normal congregations have been called off because of the, the virus that is moving in the world. And the Bible says we as God's people, we need to be wise. And based on that, we thought of uh, recording our services live and then we stream them live to your houses where you don't have to come to church facility but you can still enjoy the word of the Lord. I know the desire of every child of God is that prayer that David prayed. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and one thing will I seek after, is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That is in the book of Psalms, the 27th chapter, and verse number 4. Uh, that is the desire of every child of God. I know even right now you are saying, I wish uh, we had gathered in the house of the Lord. I wish this is happening uh, in a congregational way, pattern, where we are having fellowship one with another. But be as it may, the word of the Lord is preached, and we will receive it, even light in our houses. So we have that prayer, we have that desire. The, work, the house of the Lord is very important. Uh, to, a, to a child of God because that is where we renew our strength. In a time like this, we cannot ignore the fellowship of the brethren. We cannot ignore the word of the Lord because it is the word of the Lord that um, uh, strengthens us, uh, that makes us to uh, hold firm even in the time of trial and adversity. Uh, David said in the book of Psalms, the seventy. That chapter, a first of scripture right there, uh, he had not been in the house of the Lord for some time. And when he was there, he had a prayer and he had, he had an observation. In Psalms 73 and verse number 1, truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Uh, he recognized the goodness of the Lord to his people. But first number two, he says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Uh, he said, I almost gave up. I almost backslid. Uh, when you are not in the house of the Lord, there are a lot of voices that you hear. There's a lot of things that you see. Some of them are so discouraging. Some of them are so disappointing. Uh, but our refuge is in the house of the Lord. Uh, he said, I almost backslid. And at this time where we are not having our regular services, we are not meeting as often as we would have wanted to meet. 
there are those voices, there are those sounds that uh, individuals will hear in the streets, in their houses, through the social media, the print media, things that sometimes may make a child of God to lose their hope in God, uh, to lose their faith in the Lord. Uh, he, he observed this and he became envious, verse number three. He said, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He observed that. He saw the ungodly were doing as it were well. The ungodly were doing well in their lives. No problem, no trouble. Uh, but, 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 but as a child of God, he felt like, where is my hope? Where do I go? But I thank God he said, First number, uh, first number 17 of the same book, he said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. The sanctuary of God, that is where the word of God is preached. Uh, that is where we have our uh, uh, strength renewed. Uh, because without that, we can easily get discouraged. Uh, we can easily, as a child of God, faint. Uh, that is why we encourage through the word of God. Uh, it may not be in a normal regular service where everybody is in attendance, but we can still speak this word light into your house uh, through the social media, through whatever means you are watching us through. And this word is able to encourage you, it's able uh, to uphold you uh, so that you don't faint. The church, uh, we are going as it were through a time of silence. Uh, we cannot uh, preach the way we would want to preach. We cannot uh, worship, sing, and fellowship with each other the way we would want to fellowship with each other. But we still have the word of God. We still have the scriptures. We still have this book, which is able to encourage and strengthen a child of God. That is why Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, though he was not there, uh, he used what was convenient that time, and it was a letter. He wrote to the church in Corinth. And when he was concluding, he said uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse number 58, uh, here in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter, and verse number 58, uh, he is talking to the people of God, he is talking to the saints uh, through a letter. And I'm talking to you this morning, through the social media, I may not write a letter to you, wherever you are, but you can listen to me. You can watch, you can take your notebook and your Bible and you go through together with me the verses of scriptures uh, that God has put in my heart this morning. Uh, he said, verse number 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be steadfast. In other words, as a child of God, even when we are staying out of our uh, no more regular services, you should remain steadfast. You should remain unmovable. You should always, let not you, let not you not being in the service on Wednesday and Friday and Sunday weaken you or make you sleep as it were. Uh, lose your confidence in God. Lose your trust and your hope in God. But the Bible is saying, encouraging the saints in Corinth, he said, be steadfast. And I want to encourage you in the midst of all these confusions and all this uncertainty. As a child of God, I pray that God will help you to be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. As a child of God, you should. Always. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what you hear. It doesn't matter the circumstances that you find yourself in. You should always, and I mean always, be it uh, in your homes, uh, be it in your offices, be it wherever you are, always abound in the work of the Lord. What is the work of the Lord? Uh, when Paul is saying always abounding in the work of the Lord, uh, what, what, what does it mean? We even in this time uh, when we are not meeting, uh, regularly, uh, in my uh, house, in my office, in whatever I'm doing, I'm traveling. How, what does it mean to abide in the house of the Lord? Uh, I remember 
the disciples of Jesus Christ, asking Jesus Christ in the book of John, John the, the sixth chapter of the book of John, and verse number 20, uh, verse number 20, uh, if I may read verse number 28, uh, the Bible say, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? It's, it's a concern. Paul is telling the church in Corinth, always abound in the work of God. So what they, does that mean? And the disciples also got concerned. Uh, how, what can we do? They are saying, what shall we do? that we might work the works of God. What, what does it mean? Is it, is it uh, uh, what, what, what qualities? What are we supposed to be involved in? And the Bible says, verse number 29, Jesus answered to them, and he said, uh, this is the work of God. This is the work of God. What is the work of God? As you go through the verses of scriptures with me, I would like to further up this answer, this question, and the answer of Jesus Christ that this is the work of God. And he said that is to believe on him whom he has sent. So the work of God is the ability to believe. It doesn't matter the situation. doesn't matter what is happening in the land. A child of God should always abide in the work of God. And the work of God is to believe. You never lose your hope. You never lose your confidence. You never lose your trust in God. Uh, uh, the scientist may say all this, which is true. There's a virus. It's a plague. It's a pestilence that is moving in the land. But as a child of God, this is what is required of you. Always to abound in the work of God. And to abound in the work of God is to believe. The ability to believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, in the times of adversity, as a child of God, uh, we need to have this gospel being preached. We need to have the word of God uh, being explained uh, in the book of Romans. I may read several verses of scriptures right here uh, in the book of Romans, the first chapter of the book of Romans. And verse number 16, Paul is saying, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jews first and also to the Greek. In other words, to every child of God, uh, as long as they expose themselves and imbibe the word of God in their heart, then they are going to be saved. They are going to be uh, delivered. First number 17, the Bible says, For they are in, uh, in the gospel, in the word of God, in the preaching. When a man of God is holding the Bible, preaching and expounding the word of God, that is the word of God is revealing and manifesting the righteousness of God. Uh, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The more we listen uh, to the word of God, the more we hear this gospel, the more we have faith from faith to faith. That even when I go through adversity, when I go through the valley, of the shadow of death. Uh, I cannot be uh, disappointed. I cannot give up. I will still continue abounding. Even in this time. When we have this adversity. This calamity. This virus in the land. A child of God always have their faith in God. It is revealed uh, from faith to faith. For it is written. The just shall live by their faith. In this time. The children of God that are exposed to the word of God, that are believers of the word of God, then they live by faith. But the problem is, many of God's people, they faint. They, they don't have uh, the strength. Uh, the strength is weaker. Uh, they, don't have, uh, they don't have the word of God properly imbibed in their hearts. Uh, the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, in the book of Proverbs, uh, the 24th chapter. These are the days of adversity. We cannot fellowship the way we have always fellowshiped. Uh, we can't go to worship God in the sanctuary the way we have always worshipped. Uh, though the time of David said, until I went to the house of God. What about us? Today we cannot go to the house of God, but we can have the word of God light in our houses. 
We can have the scriptures being expounded by the men of God, light in our houses uh, through whatever media uh, means that God has given to us. This time we use it. We don't abuse it. Uh, as the Bible is saying that if you faint in the book of Proverbs, the 24th chapter, I believe it is in the book of Proverbs, the 24th chapter, uh, there's a first of scripture lie there. First number 10, the Bible says, if you faint, in the day of adversity. And these are the days of adversity. This is the time we cannot uh, uh, meet the way we would want to meet. Uh, we cannot come to the house of God to renew our strength. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, fellowship with, that, with each other the way we would want like the early church did. They continued daily with the apostles' doctrine in prayer in fellowship and in breaking of bread from the temple and also from house to house. Today we cannot meet in the temple, we cannot be, meet in the sanctuary, neither can we have cell group meetings in our houses, but we can still have the word of God being expounded. We can still have the word of God. So the Bible is saying, if thou faint in the day of adversity, it is because your strength is small. And that is why we are here once again, uh, whatever means you're using to listen to us. Uh, God helping us to give you the word of God that is able to renew your strength. Uh, so that your strength, even in the time of adversity, you don't faint. To faint, it means to give up. To faint, it means to drop down and surrender to despair. Uh, you, 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 you stop, you desist from work. Uh, that means when you faint, you are no longer abounding in the work of the Lord. When you faint, you are no longer steadfast. When you faint, you have dropped your call uh, that God has called you. What can we do to do, to do the work of God? Is to believe in him whom he has sent. So when you faint in the day of adversity, it means you no longer have your faith in God. Uh, we have a, uh, the, 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 in the book of Revelation, John the Revelator, uh, lighting uh, through the instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ, light, lighting to the churches, seven churches in Asia. The Bible says in the, when he was lighting to the church in Ephesus, in the book of uh, if, uh, Revelation, the second chapter, the book of Revelation, the second chapter, uh, he is lighting and he said, and I would like you to note, in all the churches, the opening statement was, I know thy works. I know thy works. As a child of God, God can light and say, I know your work. Even when you are in trouble, even when you are going through the valley of Baca, you still maintained the work. He said in verse number two of Revelation, the second chapter, I know thy works and thy labor. This is the time the church, the saints of God, the elects are called to exercise their work. That is their faith in God. Uh, they have to make sure the kingdom of God is uh, expanded through their faith in God, is defended through their faith in God. Uh, the Bible says, uh, and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and you have found them to be liars. As a time like this, is when you hear a lot of false prophets. People that will come and prophesy and even try to give interpretation of what is happening right now. Uh, having there may be some of them, their private inter interpretation like we had uh, uh, during the children of Israel when they were in Babylon for 70 years. A man of God by the name of Jeremiah comes and says 70 years. A false prophet by the name of Han Hananiah comes and says two years. 
These are the time that you need to be steadfast. You need to hold on on the work of God. You have tried them, which say they are apostles, and you have found them to be liars. First number three, he said, and has borne and has patience. In other words, you have patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. If you faint in the day of adversity, it is because your faith and your strength is small. As a child of God, we are praying that God will help you not to faint. We don't know for how long we'll stay without having our regular assemblies coming together, worshiping together, uh, having each other to hug and to greet and to fellowship. But as we wait for that time, because it's in the hand of God, we have to maintain this good work. How t what can we do to do the work of God? Is to hold fast, to believe on him he has sent. You don't faint. He said, for my, and, and, has, has no bo and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. I pray that God will help each and every one of us not lose our confidence in God, not lose our trust in God. He is the Lord that healeth all our diseases. He is the Lord that he is our Savior. He said there is nothing that is too hard for our God. Everything to our God is possible. So God has permitted this to happen for a reason, for a time, and to achieve something. And between now and then, we as God's people, we should not lose our hope in God. We should focus. We should, uh, we should uh, enlighten to the church of uh, Pagamus. The Bible say in chapter 2 of the same book of uh, Revelation, he is lighting to the church of Pagamus. He said, verse number 12, And to the angel of the church of Pagamus, Light these things, saith he, which have the sharp sword with two edges. This is the word of God. This is the scriptures. The sword is the word of God. The two edges is the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, this is what we need to hold and present to God's people. He said, first number 13, I know thy works. He said, and where thou dwellest. At this time, God is saying he knows where you are. You cannot access the fellowship of the saints. You cannot come into the house of the Lord. I uh, said, one thing have I desired, and one thing will I seek after, as I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It may not be attainable right now. It may not be possible right now. But right there in your house, wherever you are, you can still have this faith. You can still do the work of God. The church of Pagamas, the Bible is saying, God knew where they were dwelling. God know where you are right now. God know the valley that you are going through right now. The trouble that you are going through. The fear that you are going through. But he is saying, all what I want you to do is to keep this work of God. Abounding in the work of the Lord. Abounding in the church. In the faith. In the word of God. Holding the scriptures. He said, even where certain seat is. That means... Where a certain seat is, it means it is where there is idol worship. People are not worshiping the true God anymore. Uh, people are no longer turning to the Lord. They are complaining and murmuring. Uh, they, 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 they are saying, why God? Why if you believe in God? Why, why is this, this happening even the ungodly? They are asking, why, where is your God, you Christians? That you profess to believe in God and you profess and you say your God healeth your prayers and answereth prayers. Where? Where is your God? As a child of God, you can't find yourself in that situation. If I can quickly, I'll come back to the book of Revelation. If I can quickly go to the book of Psalms, the 115th chapter. Our Psalms 115th chapter. And the Bible says, verse number 2, Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? We could have people who are asking and questioning our faith. 
we could have people that are mocking our belief in God. Uh, you have said that your God answers your prayers. Lie now, we have this calamity, we have this virus that is bringing the whole world almost to a halt. Where is God? It is like you're staying where the devil dwelleth, where the seat of the devil is, where they don't believe in God anymore. And if you are not careful, if you don't have enough strength, you can easily faint and start believing like they are believing start talking like they are, the way they are talking. Uh, they start now questioning God. Where is God in all this? You find a child of God that I've stayed in church all these years. They start questioning God. Where is God? Why is God permitting this? First number three, the Bible is saying, but our God is in the heavens. God has not left his throne yet. And he is not ready to, to leave his throne. He is still seated on his throne. God is still in the heavens. He said, but our God, me and you, we believe in this God. It doesn't matter what is going through. It doesn't matter what the world is bringing our way. It doesn't matter what calamities are coming. But our God still is in the heaven. And anything that is happening, it is happening according to his pleasure. It's according to his purpose. It's according to his will. Nothing happens outside the plan of God. As a child of God, when the heathen are asking, where is God? We abide in the house of God. We abide in the truth. We abide in the scriptures. We abide in the work of God. Always abounding in the work of God. And this work of God is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are tendencies of God's people when things are not going their way, they start murmuring. They start complaining. They have stayed in the church for a long, long, long time. They have professed. They have confessed their faith in God. They have said there is no God like the God of Jerusalem. But, but when they have calamity and adversity coming their way, then they start murmuring. They start questioning the existence of God, saying, Where should, why should the heathen say, where is now their God? But the answer is, our God is in the heavens. God has never lost any battle, and he will never lose any battle. And that is the confidence of a child of God. That is the faith, that is the work of God, to believe in him whom he has sent, to believe in the word of God. So you find this morning, we are called to abide in the work of the Lord, to abide in the truth, to abide in the scriptures, to abide in the promises of God. We don't faint, we don't drop down and desist from work, but we keep on holding. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It doesn't matter what is happening around us, but we look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We have a, 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 a friend of ours, all of us, we know him by the name of Job. Job was a wonderful man. Job was a wonderful man. A man that feared God. A man that things were going his way. A man uh, that the Bible says in the book of Job, the first chapter, uh, the Bible, God even have a testimony about Job. God had a testimony about Job and he is saying there was a man, Job, the first chapter and first number one. And many of us who have been in the church and could have qualified and can qualify this testimony. The Bible says there was a man in the land of whose, uh, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect, upright, and one that feared God and is steward evil. The, these are the qualities that a child of God that have been in the church can say they have a quality of a child of God that say that they have believed in God, they have trusted in God. Remember, the Bible is saying, if you faint in the day of your adversity, it is because your strength is small. And here is a man by the name of Job. A man that feared God, upright, 
a man that escheweth evil, perfect, stayed in the house of God, believed in God. But you see, God once in a while, he'll take you through the valley so that you can know exactly who you are. This is the time the faith of God's elect is being put into a trial. This is the time God is taking us through as the church and the people of God, the believers, that we may know exactly what is in our hearts. We can know exactly what is in our hearts. We may be staying in church. We have stayed in the church all, all these years. But God, once in a while, will take us through things that we may know what is in our hearts. The Bible say about a man by the name of Hezekiah in the book of 2 Chronicles. Uh, 2 Chronicles, I believe it is 2 Chronicles, a first of scripture, uh, that this man by the name of second, uh, by the name of Hezekiah, 2 Chronicles, the, the 32nd chapter, and first number 31. 2 Chronicles will come back to Job. How be it in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon? who went unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land. God, I'd like you to note that, God left him. Is it that God has left the church for a while that we cannot now meet regularly as we normally meet so that we can know exactly what is in our heart. We can know how strong is our faith. God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. It was not for God to know what was in the heart of Hezekiah, but it was, in the, it was Hezekiah to know what was in his heart. This could be the time that God is taking us as the church and the saints of God through the valley, that we may know exactly who we are, that we may know exactly the level of our faith, is it little faith, the stages of faith? Jesus said, O oh, ye of, he said, O oh, ye faithless generation. Then at one point he said, little faith. Then he said, great faith. So where are we? Because if you have no faith or you have little faith, then there are chances you may faint in the time of adversity. And when the doors of the church will finally open, we may not see you back. Because you fainted in the day of adversity. God takes you through things so that you can know exactly. Because eventually the doors of the church will be opened. But are you going to come back with that excitement? Are you still going to keep the fire burning in your heart? That when the doors of the church are opened, you are still strong, excited? Happy, gladly receiving the word of God. Or oh, were you affected by adversity and you fainted? And God left Hezekiah to try him. That Hezekiah may know what was in his heart. Not for God to know what was in the heart of Hezekiah. But it was for Hezekiah himself to know what was in his heart. So we as God's people. Once in a while, God can take us through the valley so that we can know exactly to reveal ourselves to ourselves, to reveal us to ourselves. We get to know who exactly we are. If I meet, miss church for two weeks, am I still going to have that fire of the Holy Ghost burning in me, the worship, the prayer? Am I still going to be excited and esteem the word of God? More than my necessary food? Am I having that confidence that God will see me through this and I'll still come to the house of God? Job was a man, back to the book of Job, was a man that was perfect. He was a man that eschewed evil. He was an upright man. And on top of that, he was a man that feared God. This was a man that he had his hope and his faith in the Lord. He was a man that feared God, a man that trusted in God. 
But the question is, in the time of your adversity, what will happen? And you'll find Job. Job was a man that knowing the, how God works and uh, feeling God. And when he went through this calamity, when he went through this adversity, things started changing. Then Job knew exactly who he was and knew exactly what was in his heart. And this time that we are staying away from church, we are just by ourselves in our houses and our families, is a time to reflect our relationship with God. How deep is it? How strong is it? And this Job, you remember, the devil goes to God and asks for Permission to touch Job. And Job goes, goes through some experiences. That was not pleasing. Things that he, 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 he complained. He turned around and started complaining. When his family was taken. His wealth was taken. He is now sick. And there he is. Alone. And Job opened his mouth chapter 3 verse number 1 of the book of job the bible say after this opened job his mouth and cast his day look at that a man that feared god a man that was perfect a man that was upright he has chewed evil now he has opened his mouth if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small he opened his mouth and started cursing. He said, let the day perish where until I was born. Wherein I was born. And the night in which I was, it was said, there is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from, uh, uh, from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. This is a man now that is bitter. Yet he is a man that feared God. As she were the evil, upright and perfect. But in the day of adversity, his strength proved that it was more and he is fainting. As a child of God, how is your strength? Are you going still to abide in the work of God? Are you still going to have your faith in the Lord? Job talked. He said, verse number 11, why, did I, why died I not from the womb? This is a man that is bitter. He's, he is now going through his valley. The church as individuals right now, we don't have this fellowship. We don't have somebody to encourage you. You don't have somebody to be there with you. You are alone and your God and your word and the word of God and the faith that you have in God. Job is left alone. And he said, why die, died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the berry? Immediately when my mother gave, me, gave birth to me, why didn't I die? He said, verse number 12, why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I, or why the breast that I should suckle? In other words, suck. In other words, this is a man that their faith is being put in a trial. God forsook him. God sometimes will forsake you. This coronavirus, it is it didn't happen behind the back of, of God. God is aware of it. God permitted it. And God knows what he wants to achieve in it. And once God achieves what you want to achieve in this, the coronavirus will be stopped. But by the time it will be stopped, where will you be standing as a child of God? Where will be your faith? Where will be your confidence in God? Will you still be abiding in the work of God? Will you still be abiding in the truth? Where will you be? He said, first number 16, <coughs> or oh, as uh, he said, verse number 16, all as unhidden, untimely birth, I had not been as an infant which never saw light. He said, this is a man that feared God, 
a man recorded that is upright, a man that is perfect, and a man that is steward evil until calamity, adversity struck. This time, saints of God, we need to evaluate. That is why the Bible is saying, Paul is encouraging the church, be steadfast. And I want to encourage you over and over again, be steadfast in this time of calamity, in this time of adversity, in this time where the church cannot fellowship the way you have always fellowshiped, let us be steadfast. Always abounding in the work of God. Always, always holding on the truth. Always. And the work of God is believing in him whom he sent. That is Jesus Christ. So Job went through all this. Job complained. Job murmured. Job was a man that now turned away from God, from the qualities that he uh, 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 testified about. He was a man that steward the evil, perfect, upright, and feared God. And lie there. And thank God his friends came. Chapter 4 of the book of Job. I'm showing you how like God left Hezekiah. God as it were left Job. God as it were led the church now to go into the backside of the desert. Where we don't meet anymore. Where we don't have fellowships. Where we don't have cell group meetings. Where we don't have regular services. But lie there in your house, you need to hear the word of God. And here is a man, chapter 4, verse number 1. Then Erivas, the Tanamite, answered and said, If we swear to commune with thee, these are brethren that came to see Job. When they had the calamity, they had what Job was going through. Uh, three friends uh, came together, say, let us go and visit our friend. And here one of them came and said, if we say we are swear to commune with thee, will thou be grieved? But who can uh, without himself from, who can withhold himself from speaking? Say, the way things are, we need to talk. Job, we have had your talk, we have had, and we have seen what you have gone through, but we need to talk. Here is a friend that I'm talking to you, saints of God, as a friend, as a minister of the gospel. In that state, don't question God. Don't charge God freshly. Don't let bitterness be in your heart. But continually abound in the work of God. Be steadfast and movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always, this is the work of God. To believe in Jesus Christ. To believe in his promises. This man started talking to Job. Verse number three. He said, behold, thou hast instructed many. Now he started reminding Job how he was before adversity struck. Before coronavirus came. He started reminding Job how he was. He said, behold, Thou hast instructed many. In your heydays, in the time of peace, in the time of prosperity, Job, you are there. He said, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. He said, Job, you used to walk in the streets of, of, of Jerusalem or wherever it was. And it used to be an encouragement to God's people. If you would find any that was weak, discouraged, you'd speak to them and you'd encourage them. You'd strengthen them. He is reminding them. And I want to remind you, saints of God, many years that you have been in the church or whatever number of years you have been in church, how faithful you have been. How trustworthy you have been. How... Uh, confident you have been in the house of God. I want to remind you even lie now in that uh, where you are in your house or wherever you are. I want to, you to remember before this break came. You used to be in the house of God. You are lying here in the house of God. Praising God, lifting up your hands and blessing God. You can still do that. Even in your house. And Job is being reminded and he saved us number four. And I know many of us. We have been using this verse of scripture to talk 
and live far like it is the word of God. Here, Erivas was not talking about the word of God. He was talking about the word of Job. That he was speaking to them that were weak. To them that were almost giving up. To them that were almost getting fainted. He said, thy words have uphold in him that was falling. This was not the word that we are preaching here. That the, the word of God, it is the word that Job was speaking. The word that Job was speaking, Eliphaz is saying, I want you to remember how many people came to you in their weak moments, almost giving up, almost fainting. And when you spoke to them, you upheld them. Thy words have upheld in him that was falling, Job. He is reminding him, and I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, don't look down on yourself. Many other times you have spoken words that I have upheld in him that was falling. Encourage the weak. You were there. You strengthened them. And I want you to remember that. In this time, I don't want you to faint. If you faint in the day of the adversity, it's because your faith and your strength is small. So he is saying, and I pray that God will give all of us the tongue of the learned. God will give us the ability to speak a word. And that is what Job was doing in Isaiah, the 50th chapter and verse number four. There's a prayer that you pray that God give you the tongue of the learned. The Lord have given me the tongue of the learned. The tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that was weary. Job was there. Job was there. Job before calamity struck. Job was there. He had the tongue of the learned. And that is my prayer. All of us. God to give you the tongue of the learned. God to give you the word in your mouth that to speak and encourage him that was weary. You, the, anybody that listens to you, you are healers. The people that are going to listen to you, they become individuals that are going to, once they hear the word that you speak, they are encouraged. They are people that are encouraged. They are people that are strengthened. Uh, the word to have us uh, uphold in him that was falling, and it means then you become an individual that encourages a child of God. And now Edifice is reminding Job, before you mama, before you complain, before you faint, I want to remind you who you have been. You have encouraged thy words have upheld in him that was falling. And thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. In other words, when Job would speak, them that were almost giving up, they would be encouraged and strengthened and have hope that God is still on the throne. And I want to remind you that God is still on the throne. In the midst of all this, God is still on the throne. So abide in the work of God. Abide in the church. Abide in the truth. Abide in this gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. You find a child of God. So he is reminding him, verse number five, he is saying, but now, you see, he is saying, remember what you used to be. Remember what you did when you're in good health, when everything was going okay with you. You used to speak words to them that were falling. People would come to you for encouragement. People would come to you for counsel. But he said, but now it is come upon thee but the problem the saddest thing is job you have fainted job though he was a man that is true and evil perfect and upright and feared god when this calamity came calling job fainted job started complaining started murmuring started 
charging God foolishly, started saying, where, why didn't I, didn't I die, why didn't I, why did I bring, did God bring me into the face of the earth if he knew, why did God give me this money if he knew he was going to take it away, why did God give me these children because if, if he knew he was going to take them away, why, 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 and a child of God started complaining, complaining, it is because their faith is small, if you faint in the day of our diversity, is because your strength is small. Eliphaz is telling Job, now the way you used to speak to people that were in trouble, now he is saying, but now it has come upon thee and thou faintest. He said, now it is your turn. Every one of us, every one of us, every one of us will have a chance to go through this, through this time individually and as a church. And that is why John is saying to the church in Pergamos that you have not fainted. The church correctively and again as individuals, these have to come. And it came to Job and he said, you have fainted. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Troubled. This is Job, a man that was upright, a man that feared God, a man that was perfect, a man that eschewed the evil. He was a man that would speak and uphold them that were almost falling, them that were almost giving up, them that were almost fainting. When they listened to Job, they were encouraged. And they would say, because of what Job has said, I have hope to live another day. I have hope to see God's power manifested in my life. Because Job spoke with a tongue of the learned to them that were weary. Now the time has come, it is for him now. It has come home. It has come upon him. And you know what? When... If you faint in the day of adversity, it's because your strength was small. And Job's strength was small. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. There is trouble now in the life of Job. Because this thing has now come home. It has come upon him. It is no longer now. It is no longer now the confident job. It is no longer now the man that will say, I cannot be moved. Now his faith is a test. His faith is being tried. First number six. He said, is not this your fear? Is not this that which you feared God? Is not this what you feared? Is not this what you professed? Is not this what you said? Job was a man that feared God. Even God testified. If I may back up chapter 1 and verse number 1 is saying, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God. Feared God. And Eliphaz is saying, is not this your fear? Is not this the, the, the way you esteemed God? You knew God is in power. God has everything put together. He said, is not this what you desired? You have always said. He said, why are you now being uh, so much? Uh, he said again, chapter 2 and verse number 3. Maybe chapter 1, verse number 8, before I go to chapter 3. Chapter 2, sorry. And the Lord said, even God testified about Job to the devil. And the Lord said, Has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth. And he said, A perfect man, an upright man, and one that feared God. In other words, Eliphaz is saying, Where is this testimony? When you are complaining now and you are fainting, where is this testimony that God has testified about you? Where is it? Where is this testimony that God has talked about you? Chapter 2 and verse number 3 of the book of Job. And the Lord said unto Satan again, the same statement. 
These men feared God. So Edifaz is saying, where is your fear? And I can tell you and I can ask you, where is your fear before you give up on God? Before you surrender and start walking with the ungodly and listening like the ungodly, like people that have no fear of God and start talking like somebody who doesn't fear God. Where is your fear of God? After this is said and done, after the doors of the church are opened, the church house is open, the sanctuary is open, are we going to see you back like here? Back in the house of God. Is your pastor going to see you again with excitement in the house of God, leading the worship, leading the ushering staff, being the powerful testifier, singer in the church? Are they going to see you or you are going to faint in the time of adversity? I pray that you hold on on the truth. You hold on and you continually abound in the work of God, in the faith of Jesus Christ. So Eliphaz is saying, where is your faith Back to chapter 4 and verse number 6 again he's saying, and where is your confidence? So you can, you can see four things that Eliphaz is talking about. One is the fear of God. And I can ask you as a child of God, where is the fear of God? I can ask you again, where is your confidence? Where is your trust in God? Where is your confidence in God? Where is that confidence that you know God will see us through as a church? God will see us through as individuals and will come on the other side. Praising God and thanking God for his uh, mercy. He said, Job said in chapter 13 and verse number 15, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That is the confidence of a child of God. This is the confidence that Job had. But now he is losing the confidence because of what he is going through. Are you losing your confidence in the man of God? Are you losing your confidence in the word of God? Are you losing your confidence in God because of what you are going through? He said, Job had confidence. And that is what Eliphaz is asking him. Where is that confidence that you had that though Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? He said, but I may, will maintain my own ways before him. He said, I'm going to maintain my way of worship. I'm going to keep on coming to church. I'll keep on uh, praising the Lord. I'll keep on singing. I'll keep on testifying. The confidence of Job, the confidence that he had in the Lord, let it not be taken away by these kind of suffering. Praise the Lord. God is with us. God is still on the throne. God is uh, on our side. So as a child of God, again, in the book of Proverbs, the 14th chapter and verse number 26, uh, Proverbs, the 14th chapter and verse number six, 26, the Bible says, in the fear of God, in the fear of the Lord is great or strong confidence. The fear of God. So it starts with fear and fear give birth to confidence as a child of God. Where is your confidence? In the midst of all this, in the midst of all these shutdowns and uh, these uh, lockdowns and all these curfews and all this, we can't meet in the house of God. We cannot have fellowship. Where is your fear of God? Because in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And we as Christians, we as Christians, we must fear God and that fear we have for God must give birth to confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. The children of God will have a place of refuge. So Job, look at a man that was perfect, had all these qualities, but when it came back home to him, though his word was upholding him that was falling, now he is almost falling. He is complaining. He is cursing the day he was born. He, he, he needed somebody like there to encourage him. Back to Job, the fourth chapter, and verse number six. He said, where is your faith? Is not this thy faith? Is not this thy confidence? He said, is not this your hope? Where is your hope? As a child of God, where is your hope? Where is your hope? Job, Eliphaz is telling Job, where is your hope? Before you complain and mama, before you have bitterness in your heart, where is your hope? Where is the hope of a child of God? See, God, it is God who is in church. It is God who is in complete 
control, and control of every situation. Nothing happens behind his back. Who is he that can say anything and it come to pass if the Lord commanded it not? That is the confidence a child of God has. The faith and the hope in the book of Job, the 19th chapter and verse number 25, Job is saying, for I know that my Redeemer Leave it. That is the hope. He said, I know the confidence, the hope, the fear of God. I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the later day upon the earth. First number 26. He is saying, and though after my skin, worms destroy this body. And that is why we as God's people, when things adversity, calamity comes, Times like these, uncertainty comes our way. It is a time to increase our hope in God, to increase our faith in God. We don't take these experiences as judgmental. We have a saying that we say there is what we call destroying judgment. And also we have something we call healing judgment. And God takes his people through healing judgment, not destroying judgment. And this healing judgment is to bring us more closer to God. To expose our hearts, to know what is in our hearts so that now we can mend our ways and turn to God. But the destroying judgment is for the wicked. People that don't fear God, they are ungodly. So you find now God is taking Job through that. Where is your hope? If I may quickly go to the book of Romans, uh, the fifth chapter. The book of Romans, the fifth chapter, verse number two. But by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That is a child of God. Stand in hope of the glory of God. First number three, the Bible say, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. That is a child of God. People that are, have their faith in God. People, their faith is great faith. When tribulation comes, they don't come to destroy them. But we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. It worketh patience. And patience, first number four, and patience worketh experience. And experience worketh hope. So Job is being asked, where is your hope? Because you should be having some experience. And since you don't, didn't have no experience, now God is giving you this experience so that you can have hope in God. Verse number five says, and hope maketh not ashamed. A child of God, they have such great, strong hope in God. And I believe after this, all this is said and done, the church will come out stronger. Saints of God will come out glorious. Saints of God will come out happier. Saints of God will come out more powerful. God is going to give power back to the church. As he said, I'll give power to my two witnesses in the last days. And this is preparing the church for a greater anointing, greater revival. So that is our hope. And whatever we are going through will be better because of it. It is not meant to destroy the church. It is not meant to uh, destroy the people of God, but it is preparing us for a greater revival, greater awakening, and greater rejoicing and victory uh, in the house of God, among the people of God. So Job is saying, though he slay me, though worms, back to the book of Job, uh, the 19th chapter and verse number 26, uh, he is saying, uh, Job the 19th chapter and verse number 26, uh, he is saying, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet my hope. He said, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And I, was, I want to tell you, saints of God that are listening to me, watching uh, this uh, message, I want to tell you, after this is said and done, done, we are going to see God. In the church, we are going to see God in your life. You are going to see God in your family. You are going to see God in your businesses. Them of you that have shut down their businesses, after this is said and done and the doors of your businesses are opened, you are going to see God. You are going to see the favor of God. You are going to see the grace of God manifested and demonstrated in a mighty way, in a way that you have never, ever seen. Yet in my flesh shall I see 
God. That is the hope. That is the confidence. That is the fear of a child of God. That is what we need to uphold. That is what we are supposed uh, to keep on. So back to the book of Job. Again, the fourth chapter. We are talking about hope. Uh, where is your hope? And the final thing was, where is your uprightness? Is not this thy fear? Is not this thy confidence? Is not this thy hope? And is not this the uprightness of your ways as a child of God the uprightness and God testified about Job he said he was upright again we have gone through those verses of scriptures over and over again Job the first chapter and verse number one he was upright man an upright perfect and upright perfect and upright verse number eight perfect and upright this is a man that was perfect and an upright man Chapter 2, verse number 3, a perfect man uh, that was upright and perfect. Perfect and upright. So, he, Eliphaz is saying, where is your uprightness? In other words, you cannot charge God. You don't lose your faith. You don't lose your confidence. You don't lose your trust in God. And that is why this morning I'm saying, as you are listening to me, this Sunday morning I'm saying, where is your hope in God? Where is your fear of God? Where is your confidence and your uprightness as we go through this as a church? That is why I say, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the house of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of God. In the work of God. And the work of God is to have faith. So the church in Pagamas is. John is writing the church in Pagamas. He said. In the book of uh, uh, Revelation. Uh, the second chapter. Uh, he is saying. The church in Pagamas. We were there. I know thy works. And thou. Uh, and where thou dwellest. Even where certain seat. Where we are not having church services regularly as we would want. Even where certain seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. You hold fast the name of the Lord. And he said, and has not denied my faith. If you faint, the church in Pagamos could have easily justified. He said, no, after all, this is where certain seat it is. Everybody can understand. Everybody can, 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 can understand that it is not easy uh, to keep our uprightness. It is not easy to, 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 to have our hope in God. It is not easy to fear God. It is not easy. Everybody can understand because we are where the, the seat of Satan is. Where we are not able to worship God. Where we are not able uh, to go to church. Where we are not able to congregate and have fellowship. He said, he said in the midst of all that, he said, thou hast Thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith. You have not. And that is my prayer. You don't deny the faith. You don't deny the faith. You don't faint in these times of adversity. You don't faint. But you hold strong. You hold strong on the word of the Lord. That is why even Jesus is praying to Pete, for Peter in the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. In the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. And that is my prayer. Uh, that is my prayer uh, for every child of God that is uh, listening to me this morning. That in this time, God will help you that your faith fail you not. I pray from the depth of my heart, that God will help you that your faith fail not. Jesus knew the sifting that Peter was to go through. Jesus knew that Peter was also going to have his, his faith tested. But he said, I pray that after the testing, I'll still find you in the house of God. That after it is said and done, and the doors of the church and the house of God are opened. I'll see you again worshiping God. Lifting your hands in the sanctuary and blessing the Lord. Opening wide your mouth and praising the Lord. 
And Jesus said to Peter in the book of uh, uh, Luke, the 22nd chapter, he said, first number that to one, he said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And every one of us, we could be going through that now as a church. A lot of uncertainty. We don't know when the doors of the church will be opened again. We don't know when next we'll come to the house of God. And Jesus said, I don't know, Peter, when it will start, but I know Satan wants to do it. He desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But first number 32 is what blesses me. And this is what I want to profess and talk uh, to you listening to me. He said, but I have prayed for you. And I want to tell you and assure you, my prayers are with you. I'm praying for you, you child of God. You that is looking at me, you that is listening to me. I pray for you that your faith fail not. I pray that you keep abounding in the work of God. Whether there's a church service or not, keep on abounding. Whether there's cell group meetings going on or not, I pray for you that your faith fail you not. I pray that God, because God, if Jesus never prayed for Peter, his faith was going to fail him. He was going to fall, but I thank God that he prayed and I pray for you that God will uphold you and keep you from falling. Now unto him, Jude says in the book of Jude, which is only one chapter, verse number 24, the Bible says, now unto him, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Keep you from falling. And I pray that God will keep you from falling. That when everything is said and done, we'll still see you in the house of God. Doesn't know, we don't know how long it will take. But believe you me, the doors of the church will be opened at some days. But I pray that I will see you again in the house of God. Your pastor will see you again in the house of God. Occupying your position that you have always occupied. With an even greater zeal of, for God than even you had. You have the zeal of the Holy Spirit. You have the zeal of working for God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. I pray for you that God will keep you from falling. And that is why Paul is saying we keep on preaching. We keep on testifying. We keep on this gospel, the kingdom. He said, for I am not ashamed. We, start, we read that first of scripture in the book of Romans, the first chapter and first number 16. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believeth. To the Jews and also to the Greeks. First number 17, he says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by his faith. In other words, what I'm praying, and I pray that God in these other days, these other days, that the just, you as a child of God, you will live by faith. Always abounding in the work of God. The calamity will come, the shakings will come, the pencilences will come, but because you have the faith of God, God will deliver you. God will keep you safe. God will keep you secure. My prayer as I close is that God of heaven will preserve you and keep you from falling. Your faith fail you not. You keep on holding on the truth. You keep on holding on the word of God and the promises of God. Because if you faint in this time, then it means your faith is small. Job fainted. But I thank God he had good friends that talked to him. And Job's faith was restored back to God. Job's confidence in God was restored. And I pray that them of you that are almost questioning God and murmuring that God will renew your strength. The Bible say 
in Psalms the 41st chapter and verse number one. Keep silence. Keep silence. Isaiah, sorry, is Isaiah 41 and verse number one. And say, keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Every preaching, every exposition of the word of God is an opportunity for God's people to renew their strength. And I pray that God will help you to renew your strength with this message we have preached this morning. And you keep on abiding in the work of the Lord. And next time we'll appear again, we'll help you again to renew your strength. So I pray that God will keep you, will preserve you from every calamity, from every trouble, from every danger. And he is going to preserve you until we meet again in the house of God. And before then, uh, we meet in the house of God. We'll have more services that are going to be aired online. Uh, and we are going to give uh, all this exposition of the word of the Lord. So for now, may God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. God keep you safe in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you.